What has politics got to do with electronic trading? Quite a lot, actually. This year, there's been a resurgence of conservatism on both sides of the Atlantic. This is a good thing for electronic trading, but what will happen if Labour form a minority government in Britain? There aren't really very many technologically advanced industries which, are, which draw parallels between the actual product and the political environment in which they operate. Mm. But this is one of them. And it comes up occasionally, in my opinion, the, the um, resurgence of conservatism on both sides of the Atlantic has had a dramatic impact on our industry from an institutional sp uh, perspective and from a market's perspective. I think it's a good point. I think you have to look at why there's been a resurgence of conservatism. Um, there's been a dramatic shift to the right or moving away from liberal attitudes because of the uh, terrorist attacks globally. Probably. The terrorism like has to. forced people to question how much liberty do they want to give a human being when that liberty is infringed upon by the foreign powers or foreign people coming in and killing people, knifing, stabbings, drive-bys, dry, uh, rammings, etc. Especially et on the European side of the Atlantic. Correct. That doesn't really happen in the US, but in Europe it ha there's been a lot of that over the last few years. Mm. So Donald Trump got into power, and at the same time, roughly the same time, Britain became an independent country once again for the first time since 1973, away from the European Union. Right. And at that point, it's, I started to research what would have happened if things had gone the other way. And it doesn't look good, because for our industry, there are two important factors. It's a global business. It's an electronic global business, which relies on development of technology with a very short development cycle, mm -hmm. freedom of liquidity from good quality jurisdictions. And Europe, mainland Europe, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, no name all of them, don't have that. They're nowhere on the world stage of this. Where are those centers? London, New York, Singapore, Hong Kong, Sydney, and believe it or not nowadays, mainland China. Are you, are you aware that the second country outside of the United States that has the highest investment of research and development in technology is the UK? Yes, I can well believe that. The UK is so. moving out of Europe now specifically because it wants to en transact contracts and transact business with jurisdictions and countries that were previously restricted or That's had to right. have permission yes. of Brussels or yes. permission of the EU in order to transact that business. Well, this is the thing, and that, that in my opinion, is like a massive gate opening to, do, to, to freedom of doing business properly mm. in a level playing field, good environment with, with the tier one countries. Um, if Britain had not become independent, not only would it be subject to exactly, as you say, having to have permission from Brussels, which would probably be denied to do business with Singapore, Hong Kong, US, Canada, Australia freely, which are all countries which have traditionally done extremely large volumes of business in every sector with Britain mm -hmm. over the years. And as a result, the banking system that's set up in those countries is aligned with that of Britain. Right. Whereas the European one is not. Mm -hmm. And then what would have happened also, now we've just had the general elections in Britain, we've seen that go past last week, which was very, very difficult to, to, to comprehend for those who didn't really study it clearly. It was a, a very unusual set of circumstances. But if, if the uh, Labour Party had got into power, yes, Britain would have been freed from the uh, European Union still, because there's no going back on that. But this industry would have been targeted by the Tobin tax. Mm. The government the shadow government, the Labour government, have categorically said that they want to wage war on, on capitalism and impose a transaction tax on every single trade made, mm -hmm. which means it would become unprofitable to do business. Well, on the assumption that Labour would have got in, or would get in, because Labour can still form a government. They could indeed, yes. The Turban tax is penal. It, it stops penal. all transfer of penal. FX transfers and more, li more liabilities on the firm transacting that FX. It restricts the movement of business. Yes, it does. It's going to penalise good companies, higher tax. There will be an exit of brain power outside of the UK. And the effect of that would be disastrous. In my opinion, you'll see more of what happened. You see, Saxo Bank is a very widely respected company, Danish, but they operate their main uh, institutional business from London. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, if you look at the last year or so, Saxo Bank has been very active in, in, in pr producing the, the proprietary technology for, for um, getting into local banks and other, other multi-asset businesses in the Far East. Mm -hmm. 
If this carries on, a company like that could easily just exit from the British market altogether, the CFD market, so to speak. They recently sold 30% of the company to a Chinese firm. Mm -hmm. That's the way, it, if there's an anti-business environment in Britain, that's what the good quality companies will start doing. I think I need to just elaborate on one particular point you mentioned. One of the advantages of the UK leaving the EU is that up until 10 years ago, the EU was a 18 member, 25 member, 28 member now enterprise where you could do business with 28 different yes, countries. Indeed. That was before China opened up, it was. before Africa opened it up, was. and before Southeast Asia opened and up. And you you, well, well, that's a very good point because China is a fully aligned country with itself mm -hmm. and it's a powerhouse. Europe is a socialist continent of 28 different ideologies and different business environments which have all proved themselves over the last 25 years to be very unproductive. Right. And very, very expensive to maintain. Right. So what would happen is, going to answer your previous point, was that there would be a brain drain from the UK. Yes. You'd have no, if Labour got in, there'd be no further investment by foreign companies no into the UK due to the instability in the That's high right. taxes. And therefore they would relocate, including UK firms. Probably to Hong Kong and Singapore. Singapore, even to Cyprus. Yes, indeed. That we discussed yes, earlier indeed. on. And therefore have a head office in Cyprus. They would. And alleviate them of all the obligations and the high tax liability that would be imposed by a new socialist government. Yes, absolutely. So actually this is a t turbulent point but on the on the whilst the majority looks like it's gone towards conservatism and we're, we're able to preserve this business and actually open it up to tier one jurisdictions mm -hmm. let's hope the tobin tax never darkens the door of london well if it was then you could see a significant exit of many many established firms out of the uk and it'd be a long time before they would consider coming back into yes. the uk to establish business links. i think that's absolutely right Thank you very much, Mir Valensky. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Mir Valensky, CEO of Valensky Financial Group. Thank you. I'm Andrew Sachs McLeod, CEO of Finance Feeds. Thank you very much for joining us here today in Geneva, Switzerland at Ducas Copy TV. See you again. Goodbye.